Hey guys, welcome to Testing Academy. My name is Pramod and welcome to the 30 days of automation in testing guys. This is the day 13 and in this video, we're going to talk about the weight in Selenium and different types of weights that you have encountered in Selenium. All right. So I'm excited to share this, all the information. So let's get started guys. All right. All right. So uh, before moving on, uh, let me open uh, this thing. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, before moving on guys, we are on a mission to learn 30 automation testing especially the 30 days if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed go subscribe here and uh, we cannot learn lots of lots of different things related to the automation right and today we are targeting selenium in that case and we're going to talk about the different uh, what is a weight in selenium and how you can implement the three different types of weights uh, uh, in the selenium right uh, the syntax that i'm going to give you is according to java but you can over the internet or you can go to selenium dev or uh, you can convert them into your respective language uh, python as well as ruby or c sharp if you are comfortable on it right uh, one more thing if you want to become a uh, become an automation rock star uh, you can join the community of uh, the testingacademy.com we have 1200 and more people who are interested in learning automation and they are keep discussing about the selenium automation api testing and all right i'll recommend it to go and join the community that will helpful because I, I'm on a mission to change or uh, basically convert, you can say lots of people to become a better automation tester. I have more than eight years experience and I want you to be successful in that case, right? So let's move on with the Bates in Selenium, right? So uh, if we talk about, uh, let me close it, right? Which Selenium weight is better, right? So this is the last one, but uh, so let's talk about the three main automate or uh, three three weight weights in selenium right so first is the implicit weight so uh, if we talk about it right implicit weight is is basically used to set a default weight right uh, in your automation script to wait for an element element for a element on the page right you want to wait for a particular element to come right but you are basically adding a adding a weight which will basically stop the flow of your script right uh, so that's is it is an implicit weight in that case right uh, in a simpler manner implicit weight is basically a set it is applicable for the whole automation script right so if you have written particular 10 commands right for the for, so it will buy and if you have mentioned the first thing in the first thing in the command that okay wait for 10 seconds so it will that script will wait for 10 seconds irrespective other elements are already present uh, you can interact with them but it will wait because you have implicitly mentioned that wait for 10 seconds then proceed for the rest of the command right again it has major disadvantage default wait for any implicit wait is zero second in that case and if we are not able to find that element of you are not able to find the second consecutive element we're, we're going to give a no such a element exception in that case right implicit wait is a maximum time set between the two steps of command right i have this command this command and I want to wait for 20 seconds before running the second command, right? This will basically again wait for the full automation script to basically halt for that seconds, right? Uh, how you can do it? You can use driver dot manage uh, dot timeouts implicit wait and 10 second, right? You are just telling your automation script to wait for 10 seconds. That gives nothing else. You are not adding any logic. If the element is visible, if elements are polling, uh, if you, they are not visible, if they will come after five seconds or not, you are not clear. You are not are uh, doing anything alone you are just mentioning implicitly that okay wait for 10 seconds that's all your scripts in that case so that's what a implicit weight right it's very very bad and i won't recommend to use implicit weight in that case right similarly you can have uh that thread dot sleep which will basically uh make the whole automation script to slip it down for certain seconds right not recommended way to do it okay if anyone asks you what is implicit weight it's basically uh, used to set a default timeout and it will basically stop the execution of your automation script for right for a particular time period that you have mentioned right and it will throw a note such as no such element exception if it is not able to find the next element that you are talking about make sense cool let's talk about the explicit weight right so let me close this one so that we can have explicit weight is a basically a conditional base right and we want to add a condition before proceeding Right. I want to check a particular, uh, it basically tells the web driver to wait for a certain condition before maximum timeout is exceeded. Right. So, uh, how it's a, uh, again, it's an intelligent wait and it waits for certain condition, right? It's so, you know, the answer, which one is best, uh, way to use, right? Uh, let's move on. 
there is a th third weight remaining right so it it provides a better approach to handle a dynamic ajax element so right now people are moving towards this single page application pwa which is progressive web application there are like dynamic elements and you cannot add a implicit weight for 10 seconds in that case right so what you can do is that you can have some intelligence so uh, again if uh if, if element uh, we are not able to find will get element not visible exception in that case so what we are doing here is that uh, this is a syntax right so we are basically adding a maximum timeout of 10 seconds right and we are waiting if our alert is present so in that 10 second uh, suppose on the third second alert is present so our wait is based basically we are not waiting right we will continue in that case we are maximum waiting for 10 second and if our alert alert is already present in third second third second we are continuing our execution right we don't want our automation script to wait in that case whereas an implicit wait we are just waiting for 10 seconds even if the all the elements are present in that case so that's one of the reason sense cool you can have more expected conditions like element is present element is selectable clickable and frame is to be available and switch to right you can have title title contain visibility of element visible of all elements right there are like multiple ways in the previous video we have implemented also visibility of an element element to be clickable present element presence of an element right so these three are important most of the time you will use those things so that is again a, a explicit weight right so uh, there is a new weight which is called as fluent weight and trust me guys it's one of the best way to use it and we have been using it uh trust me it works very well uh it's a kind of a mixture of both implicit and explicit so it will wait for a condition but with the frequency this is a kb right it will wait with the frequency it means fluent weight is basically used to wait for a particular condition like we have in ex explicit weight with a regular frequency to be checked before throwing any kinds of exception so it's a very simple way for example what we are doing is that uh, instead uh, i have added a maximum time out to 10 seconds i am checking after 3 seconds if the element is visible again polling again with the uh, okay uh, if the time or uh, if my element is visible or not again polling with the element if uh, visible or not right so basically it means that weight is basically used to condition for regular frequency we are checking in an interval and uh, if the maximum timeout is timeout is reached, I mean 10 second is reached, it may it will basically throw a reception like element not visible exception, right? So uh, it will check for after every five second for an element x that we want to check, all right? I want to check an x element is present or not in that page. It will check after keep on checking after the five second, and we have a maximum timeout also in that case. Makes sense, right? So this is a syntax look like. We have wait, wait, new fluent wait. We need to pass the web driver reference, basically the driver object. Uh, with timeout, I want to add the maximum timeout. I want to time out the polling. For example, I can have uh, 20 second here. I can have polling of two seconds. I want to check to after two seconds if the element is visible or not. Ignoring the exception, I want to ex ignore the exception. For example, I can add uh, uh, any kind of exception that I want to ignore in that case, right? And here is the logic. So what we are doing, we are waiting until this element basically, if this element or is uh, basically available or not, right? So we are keep we'll keep on polling until the, we find the ID is equal to foo, right? We will basically every five second we gonna poll and we gonna check the if the element is present. No, okay. Uh, if element is present, no, okay. After two second, two second, two second, two second, and ten second, which is the maximum timeout, it will throw an exception, not visible. Right. it's a smart one it's a very wonderful way uh, which selenium weight is better definitely fluent weight is i believe is for the best way uh, but most of the time most of the time is still now we are using explicit weight in most of our frameworks and people haven't mostly switched to fluent weight but they are going okay that makes sense right uh, polling is again uh, it, it's a great concept that is implemented in a smart way in the fluent weight so fluent weight is better right thanks a lot for watching i hope you have understand what are the different types of weights in selenium uh if you have doubt if you have any kind of in doubt and all you can definitely go and click here basically apatesting.co slash chat or you can put it into comments right i will be happy to help thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next video i hope you are following us on the 30 days of automation and testing challenge these are the challenge where we are going to learn about the different concepts related to automation selenium cybers and all 
and definitely can help you to become a better automation tester.